in this lesson, we want to talk about the conjugate zeros theorem. All right, so as we continue to talk about finding the zeros of a polynomial function, we're going to come across this section in our book that talks about the conjugate zeros theorem. So the conjugate zeros theorem, which is also known as the conjugate pairs theorem, just tells us that if we have a polynomial function, let's just say it's f of x, that has only real coefficients, then if some complex number, let's say a plus bi is a zero, then a minus bi, its conjugate, is also going to be a zero. So in other words, complex zeros always occur in pairs, okay? So if I had something like, let's say two plus three i, and that was a zero, well, then it would also be true that two minus three i would be a zero, okay? Remember for conjugates, this part stays the same, okay? So you have two and two, and then this part stays the same. So you have three i and three i. It's just that your signs are gonna be different, okay? So you have a plus and then a minus. And we already saw this when we worked with quadratic equations, right? We would solve them and we would find what? That you either had two real solutions, you had two complex solutions, meaning they were imaginary solutions with the imaginary unit i involved, or you would get one solution, but we already learned that we could say it has a multiplicity two, right? It's the same solution that occurs twice. So those were your only three possibilities. So what we're gonna do is use this information. We have two different tasks that we're gonna complete in this section. The first one, we already talked about this in the last lesson. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a polynomial of least degree having only real coefficients and zeros that meet this criteria. So the zeros given are one and one plus two i. So we know that this guy right here, this one, that's just a regular zero we've been working with that forever. But when we get this complex zero, one plus two i, well, we know that it's going to have its conjugate as a zero as well. So we can go ahead and write in here that another zero would be one minus two i. Again, the one stays the same, the two i stays the same, just change the sign to get the conjugate. That's all you're doing. So now if I wanna write out my polynomial function, remember the form. It's f of x is equal to, it's a times you have your x minus k sub one, times your x minus k sub two, and then you, know, you keep going and then you have your x minus k sub n, okay? So in each case, it's x minus whatever the zero is. So in this one, I'd say x minus one, and then for these, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated because I'm subtracting away a complex number. So let me just kind of write this off here. And I'll say that this is x minus, and I'll put it in parentheses, one plus two i. And then let me close that and I'll do x minus, now I'm gonna do one, let me slide this down, I'm gonna run out of room. And now we'll have minus two i, go ahead and close that off. Okay, now in this particular case, you're not given any information. I know in the last section we were given a point and then we could figure out what A is. So here A is just going to be one, so you can just erase it or put a one there. And what happens is we're just gonna go through and simplify this. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it is quite tedious, but we'll have our polynomial function and it's a good exercise to kind of practice working with these complex numbers. Okay, so let's go through and start simplifying. So I'll say f of x, is equal to, I'm gonna leave this for last. So I'm gonna have x minus one outside of, and I'll just put some brackets here. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do FOIL with these guys as they are, okay? So I'm gonna treat this as the first term and this as the second term in each polynomial. So this is your first term and this is going to be your second term, okay? So I'm going to say that I have what? First terms, x times x is x squared. And then my outer terms, I would have x times negative this guy, the one minus two i, in parentheses. So remember the minus, and you have x times this quantity, one minus two i, okay? And then continuing, and I'm probably not gonna be able to fit all this, but I'll try and see if we can squeeze it down. So let me erase this and put minus x times, again, one minus two i. Let's kind of scrunch that down a little bit. So when I go to my inside terms, I'm gonna have this negative times this one plus two i, that quantity times this x. So I'll have minus x times, again, this quantity one plus two i. And then for the last terms, I have this guy times this guy. Now it's negative times negative, so I know it's gonna be a positive, okay? And then what I wanna do is say that I have what? one plus two i times one minus two i. Well, I know my formula for that. Remember, if you have a plus b times a minus b, this is a squared minus b squared, okay? 
So in this particular case, I'm just going to write this down here because I'm just going to run out of room. I'm going to say that I have what? The first guy squared, so 1 squared, which is 1, minus the second guy squared. So if I take 2 and squared, I get 4. If I take i and square it, remember, i squared by definition is negative 1. So this would be negative 1. So really, you have negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. So 1 plus 4 is just going to give me 5. So I can write this as 5 here, and that allows me to fit everything on my screen. Okay, so now we're going to simplify. Let me scroll down and get some room going and see where we are. So we have f of x equals, I've still got this x minus 1 out in front. And inside, I'm just going to see what I can do to simplify. So let me put my brackets here. So I have my x squared, and then I have my negative x times 1, which is just minus x. And then negative x times negative 2i would be plus, we'll do 2i x. Then moving down here, I have negative x times 1, which is minus x. And then negative x times 2i is going to be negative 2i x. And then lastly, I have my plus 5. Okay. So what we see now is that this will cancel with this, and negative x minus another x would be negative 2x. So let's go ahead and write that. We'd have f of x equals the quantity x minus 1 times, I'll have x squared. Again, negative x minus x is minus 2x. And then we're going to have plus 5. So it's starting to look pretty good. So let's scroll down a little bit. I know this is tedious, but you have to do some examples of these. So we'll have f of x is equal to... I'll go through and multiply x by everything. So x times x squared is x cubed. And then minus x times 2x is 2x squared. And then plus, we have 5 times x, which is 5x. And then I have a negative 1 times everything. So basically, I'm just going to change the sign of everything here. So I would have minus x squared. And then I would have plus 2x. And then I would have minus 5. Okay. So let's continue now. All we have to do is just combine like terms. So x cubed, nothing to combine with that. I have, let me get some room going here. I have negative 2x squared and minus x squared, so that would be negative 3x squared. I have 5x and 2x, so that would be plus 7x, and then I have minus 5. So we end up with our polynomial function, f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 5. All right, the next type of problem you're going to see is also pretty tedious. So suppose you're given some polynomial function, let's say f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60, and they say find all the zeros, and they give you a complex zero. So let's think about what we know at this point. At this point, we know that the degree of the polynomial is 4. So I know that I'm going to have four solutions, right? At most, it would be four distinct solutions, but I know that I'm going to have four solutions even if some of them are repeats. Okay, the other thing we know is that we're given a complex zero of 1 plus 3i, so there also has to be a zero of 1 minus 3i, because these come in conjugate pairs. Okay, so I know if I have two zeros here, I can get this guy down to a quadratic, and at that point I can use the quadratic formula, or if I'm lucky, I can factor, or complete the square, or whatever you want to use, it doesn't matter. We know that once we get it down to a quadratic, we're good to go. So there's two ways that you could attack this problem. The first thing is, you could write this out as x minus this 1 plus 3i. Okay, that's your factor. Let me make that clear. And then x minus, you have your 1 minus 3i. That's another factor. So you could multiply these two together, get that polynomial, okay? And then you could divide synthetically this guy by whatever that is. And that would give you two different quadratics that you could solve with the quadratic formula. So that's one way you could do it. Another way you can do it, and the way that I'm going to do it, probably would take a little bit longer, you can use synthetic division, okay, with this guy and with this guy to get it down to a quadratic. So that's the way I'm going to do it, just to get a little practice of working with these guys and doing some synthetic division. So I'm going to start with this one right here, okay? And what I'm going to do is go 1 plus 3i, and then over here, I'm just going to take my coefficients. So 1, negative 3, we've got 6, We've got 2, and we've got negative 60. And I made a little bit of a mistake here because when you work with this, you want to make sure you have a lot of room. So let me actually redo this. So let me come back up here and say that we have negative 3. I'll push that over here. I'll push my 6 over here, my 2 over here, and my negative 60 all the way over here. You need room because these complex numbers, they, they take up a lot of space. So let me kind of move this down, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, 
So let me put a bar down here, drop this down, and we'll start. So we'll come back up in a minute. We'll go back and forth. So basically, I drop this down. 1 plus 3i times 1 is 1 plus 3i. Okay, if I had negative 3 plus 1 plus 3i, I just add the negative 3 and the positive 1, which gives me negative 2, and the plus 3i comes along for the ride, okay? Now, where this gets tedious is that you have to multiply now. You multiply two complex numbers, you basically have to stop and do 4, okay? So we have this 1 plus 3i times this negative 2 plus 3i, okay? So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, the outer would be 1 times 3i, which is plus 3i. The inside would be 3i times negative 2, which is minus 6i. And then the last, 3i times 3i is 9i squared. Now, remember, i squared is negative 1, so you can really just say this is negative 9. Okay? So you have negative 2 minus 9, which is negative 11. And then, on top of that, you're going to have 3i minus 6i, which is minus 3i. Okay. So let's erase this. We don't need that scratch work anymore. And so if I said 6 plus negative 11 minus 3i, what is that? Again, you just work with the real parts. 6 minus 11 is negative 5. So this guy is going to be negative 5 minus 3i. Okay, so here comes again the tedious part. We've got to multiply. So we have 1 plus 3i times you have negative 5 minus 3i. Okay, and then we're going to do 1 times negative 5. That's negative 5. We're going to do 1 times negative 3i, that's minus 3i. We're going to do 3i times negative 5, that's minus 15i. If you want to combine these at this point, it would be negative 18i. Let's just go ahead and do that. And then lastly, you have 3i times negative 3i, so that's negative 9i squared. But again, i squared is negative 1, so you're just going to change the sign of this to plus. So positive 9 plus negative 5, or you can think about this as 9 minus 5, that's just going to be 4. So this would be 4 minus 18i. Okay, so now we want to add 2 plus 4 minus 18i. Well, 2 plus 4 is 6. That's all you're going to be able to do there. And then you bring the minus 18i along for the ride. All right, last multiplication. Again, I know this is tedious, but we have 1 plus 3i times you've got your 6 minus 18i. So 1 times 6 is 6. And then I'm going to do my 1 times negative 18i, which is minus 18i. And then my 3i times 6, which is plus 18i, okay? Then we have 3i times negative 18i, so we know that's a minus. 3 times 18 is 54, and then you'd have i times i, which is i squared. i squared is negative 1, so just change the sign, so it's just plus 54. Now, 54 plus 6 is 60, okay? We know that negative 18i and positive 18i, those are going to cancel, so we're just left with 60. We already knew this was a zero, so we knew we wouldn't have a remainder by definition. So we know negative 60 plus 60 is zero, and that is what we would expect, right? To have no remainder or a remainder of zero. Now, once we're done here, we already know that 1 plus 3i is a zero. We don't need it. And we know that 1 minus 3i is a zero. So we're going to use this information to further get this down. So remember, if you divided, if we go back up here, if you divided this synthetically by x minus this number, you would get this guy right here. These are your coefficients for the quotient, okay? So we're just going to use that. I'm going to erase this. I'm just going to take these guys, okay? So I'm going to take my 1. I'm going to take my negative 2 plus 3i. I'm going to take my negative 5. Let me put that as a minus. So minus 3i. And then I'm going to take my 6 minus 18i. So what we're going to do is now take the other 0, the 1 minus 3i, because we know that's a 0, and basically, when I take this quotient and divide it by this, I'm going to have a quadratic that I can then solve, again, with the quadratic formula or factoring or something like that, and I'll have all my zeros. Okay, so let's bring this down and say we have a 1. So again, 1 minus 3i times 1 would be 1 minus 3i. Okay, so when we add these, you've got negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, and then positive 3i minus 3i is 0. Okay, so it's just negative 1. Then 1 minus 3i times negative 1, just change the sign of everything. So this would be negative 1 and then plus 3i. Okay, we add negative 5 plus negative 1 or negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 3i plus 3i, that's 0. Okay, so now lastly we have 1 minus 3i times negative 6. Again, I can just multiply each term by negative 6. So this would be negative 6 and this would be plus 18i. 
So again, we knew this was a zero, so this comes out to be zero exactly, okay? And these would be the coefficients for your polynomial function, okay, that's your quotient. Now, this is going to be of degree two now. We started with a fourth degree. We did one synthetic division, so it was a third degree. Now we did another one, so it's a second degree. So this guy is going to be the coefficient for x squared. Then this is x to the first power. Then this is your constant term, okay? So this guy right here is what we're looking for. So I'll drag this up here. And we'll come here. And we'll just say, okay, where does this guy equal zero? Okay, and we can solve this with factoring. Put an x here and an x here. Give me two integers that sum to negative one. And give me a product of negative six. Well, you could do negative three and positive two. You could do negative three and positive two. So obviously, if you solve this, you would get x is equal to three or negative two. So I can just add this to my list here and say that another zero would be three and another one would be negative two. I know I said zero here. This should be zeros. But when I started, it was singular. We just had one. So let me just mark this out and say these are the zeros, okay, plural. So we have our one plus three i, which was given to us or one minus three i, which is the conjugate. And then we have three and negative two, which we found. 